Merhaba Şarko Blok takipçileri. Şimdiki konuğumuz Ramesh Srinivasan, UCLA öğretim üyesi ve Digital Cultures Lab kurucusu. Welcome. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Your speech today will be about our digital future. Yeah. Uh, do you think we will survive in the year of AI, AR and VR, or should we expect a social collapse? Well, I think I think already, uh, unfortunately, uh, in the United States and actually in a lot of the world, we're seeing a social collapse. Um, I don't think that's because of technology, but I think that. New, te- new technologies are not helping this problem. They're not resolving this problem. So let me give you examples. Um, in the United States, a lot of people, there's a lot of studies that show that people are not as invested in their communities where they live or in their schools or in their healthcare systems. People are starting to retreat. They're starting to go away from civic, civic thinking, civic media. Um, And so as a result, if we're going to build technologies that don't try to stop these trends, then technologies are going to become part of the problem. So my work and my speech this morning was really about how can we reimagine and reinvent technologies that support collectives and cultures and diversity. And I gave some examples today. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, you were in Egypt only six months after the yeah, uh, Arab Spring. And I will you never obs- forget that. Yeah, you observed that social media usage wasn't common. Uh, on the contrary, the Western media told the opposite. Absolutely. You say that Egypt has woken you up in uh, one of your articles, I suppose, and you started questioning how the internet shapes our realities. Do you now have an answer to this question? Well. In the case of Egypt, it really is about people's bravery. You know, they were protesting because they were brave. Um, you know, I I think that um, people use whatever tools they have to try to protest, right? And uh, in a place like Egypt, there wasn't a lot of internet access, and there was even less social media access. And the people that had access to those technologies are like you and me. You know, I mean, they were more liberal probably and more educated. So they were a bubble, right? I mean, they represented their own bubble. And they realized if they only acted online, they're talking to each other, and maybe they're talking to people like me, you know, who thinks they're inspiring, but I'm sitting in California, right? It's not, so, so, they, so people realize they need to work with the traditional networks, labor unions, um, neighborhoods, even the mosque. You know, they, all these different, these are different ways of building connections, human connections. At the end of the day, this is about human connection. Technology should support human connection. So for me, it's really, um, as we think about human rights and equality and democracy, and I know a lot of our world has some problems in these areas. We have it in the United States. In India, we have it also. We need to think about uh, technologies that open our voices up to each other and respect our privacy. <laughs> They, otherwise, otherwise, these are just ways to get data from us, you know? Like, data is like the new oil. It's like the oil of the new economy, right? I mean, it's sure. really that. That's, there's a reason why Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, they're some of the most wealthy companies in the history of the world. And they're all from the west coast of the United States. Actually, Which my next kind of, yeah, question sure. is about yeah, that. Sure, uh, sure. You uh, wrote an article on Quartz about the algorithms yeah. designed by the Silicon Valley, and you argue that uh, they are biased and they yeah. serve everybody equally, uh, and they represent the values of their designers. Actually. Always. What kind of actions do you think we need to take to benefit from algorithms as grassroots cultural expression yeah. and uh, let them serve diverse user communities better? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean. Most importantly, and I was just talking to Tom Goodwin about this, we need, to, as, as a system migrates to different parts of the world, the users and the cultures from those parts of the world need to have greater power over how the systems represent them, right? Exactly. I mean, at the, otherwise the systems are going to reinforce the biases of their designers and the cultures of those designers. So, for example, and as I explained in the article, um, If you build a system in Silicon Valley uh, that 
is about West Africa, it might reinforce how people in Silicon Valley who went to West Africa, maybe good people, nothing wrong with those people, they themselves talk about West Africa. But then the people in West Africa, they remain silent and kind of invisible, right? Um, even with Wikipedia. You know, Wikipedia, we feel like it's a little better. But most of Wikipedia authorship and editorship is, again, biased toward the West. And this is not because the West is bad. It's because there's more technology penetration, more technology literacy, better digital infrastructure. The Internet started in the West. It's already a wealthier part of the world. So these are the biases that are encoded into these systems. So my point is not that they are biased in a, in like a evil way. It's exactly. more that like, even if I create, if I lived in Africa and I created a system for my community, it's biased based on who I am. Exactly. So the point is that there's a disproportionate voice in bias, you know? Uh, how do you think uh, we can uh, make it better? Uh, we, have to we, we, we have to decentralize governance of platforms. And you can still have a platform company make a lot of money while giving the users greater sovereignty, greater power over how it's designed. That's number one. Number two is uh, the companies and the need to explain to us the heuristics behind the algorithm. Meaning, if you see a certain, cer certain set of search results, I need to understand, at least in some words, why I see it that way and what alternatives I might have. I might, you know, remember we used to browse the internet or even they used to use this word surf the internet, like surfing like on the ocean. We don't use those words anymore, you yeah. know? There's a reason why. It's because our experiences of the so-called open internet is just information pushed to us through algorithms. So uh, we need to get back to that openness and one way that can happen through an algorithmic world is by knowing what's happening in the algorithm. And even better, giving us power to represent ourselves. Otherwise, we're not representing ourselves, right? We're not actually speaking to the wider world. And that's really bad. That's really problematic. And it can create a lot of misunderstanding, right? I mean, it's like, um, I have a colleague uh, in my department who's writing a book about Google and black women. and. She was talking about how when you search for black women on Google, you see really racist things, you know? Mm. Black women are fat. Black women are, have big butts, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, like it's, this is because the world already is not fair to those people. So it's really sad when the technology that's supposed to be neutral, and it's never neutral, but when it's supposed to be neutral actually becomes an amplifier of those biases. That's the point I'm making. Uh, what would be the uh, one and only thing that you would suggest from where you see our future to the young professionals who aim to make difference in the areas of design, software and technology? Yeah, that's a what great question. What would you question. suggest them? Yeah, I mean, that's why I, I just said on the stage, like, what happens when we, instead of just simply thinking that the technology world is as it is, what happens when like the ecosystem of innovation, the top of the pyramid, starts in places like Turkey that unfortunately sometimes are seen at kind of near the bottom of the pyramid, right? What happens when the companies that are innovators in search, in social media, in retail, in, I mean, even more humane things like human rights, uh, governance, um, media expression, journalism, what if those companies start here? And then they employ people in this country and not just kind of be, hey, I'm just doing IT outsourcing for Facebook. That's not enough, you know? That's gonna create, so even though we have all these problems with inequality in the United States, on a global level, it's gonna be way larger. Especially if all the robots and algorithms are coming from the US. And it's not, it's not good, it's, it's a big problem. Um, I, even though I'm American, I really care about the world being more equal and more humane and more diverse and more open. I know right now that's not happening that much with our politicians. I won't say more, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but it's, but it's the, wor the technology world needs to, um, needs to respond to that. It needs to be socially responsible. You know, like when we're engineers, I mean, I was an engineer some years ago. I worked in AI, you know, I went to MIT for graduate school. 
uh, sometimes it w they're like really good people, you know, but they sometimes don't understand that the social world is so impacted by what we create. We just think we make better technology. But like, what do you mean by better, you know? Like, faster, more efficient, that's not necessarily better for the world because it's faster based on my bias, right? Exactly. Based on what I've already engineered. It's more, it's more quantitatively faster. It's a more efficient transactional algorithm. That's You're not, so right. th like, like now, you cannot define technology solely technically. It is, it, it's fundamental now on political, cultural, and economic levels. And so I want to write about what we can do about that. And you know, I, I think we have a long way to go, but the most, the most important thing is that uh, because humans create technology, technology doesn't create us, we create it. So we can make it better, you know? I mean, we had all this brilliance to create incredible technologies, like Google's an incredible, it's incredible what they created, and they should get credit for that. But just like they created it that way, they can also create something better. <laughs> thank you for thank you for joining us. My pleasure.